Not really. No. Not Sorry, really. what did you say? How do you do that? You can hear him without the microphone. We've got subtitles. I hate the microphones. Is this better? Yes. Okay. I will work with this thing. So, next, first, the first one, please. That's where we are. That's what we're doing. Go to the next one. And we covered that. So, this results of this poll are, are produced from 18 covers which received nominations, and 14 covers are tied in fourth position with one vote each. Next slide, please. So, I'm going to start with these. Can you read the caption on the left? No. <laughs> Okay, I, I don't like insulting people's intelligence by reading out what they can see on the screen behind me. So I'm going to go through this as quickly as I can. Um, and then you know why I'm conscious of time. Um, but for each cover, we've got someone's reasons for, for choosing that cover. Um, and I, and I, they're all displayed, but they're anonymous. So you only recognise your own comments. So we, we start, this, this, these are the ones that all tied in fourth position. Uh, we had with, with one vote each. So we start with 1943, and the person who nominated 1943 did so because this is the earliest movement annual I remember being given by my grandmother at Christmas. It has 11 stories, more than many other annuals. There are a lot of characters in this annual, even a black and white minstrel on the front. Okay, thank you. Next one. 1945. Rupert riding a fairy cycle. I also had a fairy cycle, without wings, of course. <laughs> and I really identified with this image. Next one, please. Um, 1948, mainly because it covers my favourite story, Rupert and Jack Frost. Um, before we go on to the next one, I will say that people's reasons for their choice fall broadly into two categories. One is nostalgia. It's associated with the first annual they received, or that particular Christmas. Christmas time being the time when it was associated with receiving a Rupert Annual. Um, the second category is where people are uh, being analytical about the subject. Um, and that doesn't also include Christmas, but they're looking at the artistic style, the merits of Rupert's face or the background scene or whatever it might be. So that's the two broad categories that they're, that they're um, the rationale for choosing that cover for four Thank you. Next one. Um, 1950. Quite an iconic one. Uh, this annual's older than, so I'm not reading myself, older than me, so obviously inherited, not the loveliest Rupert face, but this is my favourite. Not because of the cover itself, but because of the memories. This is the nostalgia thing again. Memories, the sight of this annual cover conjures up favourite stories. I had many Rupert annuals and loved many, many of the stories, but this is the annual that contains so many of the best loved stories. And those images always stayed with me. And of course, this is one of the images I was reminded when I was looking at the, um, the stalls, particularly the the followers stall, where you've got some of the World Northern figures available, um, but that was a, um, a particularly uh, a very nice um, daughter piece of sculpture of, 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 of China. Thank you. 19, this one is 1951. Although this was my second annual, not the first, the cover seems to encapsulate everything about an ideal day in the winter. When I received my annual, with snow, which was really, which we really saw, and showing just about all of Rupert's friends as well as the star himself. So that, that's another sort of sub 
subcategory of reasons. It's, it's seeing Rupert connecting and involved with some activity with his chums. Um, sometimes some of the, the older residents of Nutwood um, looking on and approving me. Next one, please, Charles. 1959. Not because I believe it's the best cover, but because it was my first Rupert Daniel. <laughs> nostalgia under the game. So I, I have a powerfully sentimental and nostalgic attachment to it. Thank you, Charles. 1960. This is purely the one I find the most attractive, beautiful, and not associated with any nostalgia. Uh, full of atmosphere and very Christmassy, just what you want to be reading after your Christmas dinner sat by the fire. <laughs> Thank you. 1964. Now, something is clicking here. Uh, we will have to wait until tonight's gala dinner to hear why this is a special annual cover for a particular follower. And are you holding up the... No, this, this is a Clark Kent print. It's a print. Um, it, it is um, this person's uh, favourite uh, favorite annual cover. And this is probably the right here. Um, so you'll hear that um, tonight uh, at the uh, gala, gala dinner. Thank you, Charles. And the next one is 1956. Uh, because England uh, won the World Cup, <laughs> which was also out of this world. <laughs> so that, that's nostalgia too, of a sort. It's associating it with what was happening at the time. Some, you know, something important in that reader's life. Thank you, Charles. 1968. Um, this one with everyone looking in awe at the heavenly spheres. Although there's a good selection of characters, both chums and others, we virtually don't see any faces. Only Rosalie's doll, along with the toy postman and Edward Trump in profile. Despite this, we are left in no doubt as to everyone's uh, awe and, and, and her, sorry, I've got floaters in my eyes. Move across and they blur my vision momentarily. Um, or an admiration for the mysterious spheres in the sky, even simple Simon's stoat. I particularly like Bill's right hand typifying everyone's body language. Finally, the colouring is absolutely sumptuous. So that, 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 that's one that's really not, not looking at nostalgia, it, it's looking at the quality of the image, the quality of the painting, and the quality of Alfred's composition in his artwork. Thank you. 1969. It's a difficult decision, but after a bit of a debate in my head, I'm going to go with 1969 because the illustration captures the beauty of nature with the addition of some of my favourite characters. The location is exactly the type of place I choose to visit. I'd love to be uh, there right now with my feet dangling in the water. Another very personal reason for, yeah, I'd like to be there. I'd like to be involved with that. Making it part of the real world in a sense. Thank you, Charles. 1972. One of the first annuals I remember reading, and I always wanted to be at this picnic. So it's, that's, that's, that's nostalgia and identifying with the, with the scene. Uh, so many characters are included. So people, a number, number of, um, of followers do like to see as many characters as possible, which is a big demand, I think, on the artist's um, ability to, uh, in the time involved to, 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 to create the composition. Thank you, Charles. 1980. I love miniature bears and the fact, the idea that they had can puppets of themselves that were exact replicas, of course, uh, was inspired. It was 
Charlie. It was fun to see the toy maker making them while they waited, and they are obviously having great fun uh, swapping them to play with. The drawings are superb. There's so much going on. It's a delightful scene. Thank you, Charles. 2007. John Harold's first annual cover. Oh, it reflects the very first annual, sorry, very first Rupert panel in 1920, as it shows Rupert going shopping with his basket and list. <laughs> Unlike the rather isolated Tortell cottage, this cover, cover reflects a busy Nutwood scene which Bestel had developed over his 30 years writing the stories. So it's, it's a link with the past as well, isn't it? And the next one, please, Charles. Um, right, this, this is the interval before we move on to the moving up the up, up the pub. My personal choice choices. My original idea, as some of you perhaps realise, was for this presentation for me to talk about my 10 personal favourites. But then I decided to invite other followers, yourselves, to be involved. So before we move on to the covers which hold third position in your voting, let's have a look at a few that, those that I had intended to include. Thank you, Charles. 1940. I have always liked this cover because of its sheer non-conformity. It, it is, in my view, so unusually different from all the other covers. No panoramic view, no scene with chums and adults, no Santa, no elves, just Rupert engaged in drawing just like the hand that was drawing him. And I find that rather surreal. And it says something, an insight into another aspect of Alfred's imagination. And this is quite unique in my mind. Thank you, Charles. 1958. I used to enjoy looking at this scene around Easter time. The uh, sheer exuberance of spring, Rupert and Charles frolicking like the lambs, and Rupert's expression that tells us that he is having a wonderful time. Thank you, Charles. 85. This anniversary, the anniversary annual with probably every character uh, gathered to celebrate. Uh, and of course, you all know that, uh, as with all the, all the annual covers, um, the, the back cover is it's opened out, it, it, it's part of a bigger scene, but it's the front cover that we all tend to associate with because that's what you, that's what you see in the shops, that's what you <coughs> see when you open up your present. Um, but with the, then later we appreciate the, the, the bigger view. But this one in particular, because of the end paper that you could fold, unfold and perhaps frame or whatever, uh, made it more obvious. Um, and on the back cover, Alfred is there uh, sketching. Um, pure, unashamed nostalgia and brilliant. And that's John Harold, of course. Thank you, Charles. Okay, we're moving up now. Uh, two annual covers received two votes, each placing them equal in third position. And they are... Oh, Charles? Sorry. <laughs> 1965. And we've got two, two people's reasons here. This portrays everything that is brilliant in Alfred Bessler's work, with the promise of the great treats inside. It anticipates the fun and excitement of a snowy Christmas with one of the most compelling characters, Jack Frost, featuring large on the back cover. A young Rupert, sorry, a smiling Rupert with his friends in tow. Perfect. And uh, another person, another follower said, as with most of us, Rupert for me is synonymous with Christmas each year. Thank you. And the other one is 1967. Uh, it was my very first group at annual, and the nostalgia again, I had, ever, I had ever seen until I, I married, I, I, I met Mike. It reminds me of a Christmas cover 30 years ago when life seemed simpler. 
That's something a lot of us yearn for. Mm. Now, I, I, I allow this one, next one, because it, it exceeded my request to limit it to two or three sentences. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is such a difficult ask. Roger, how could you? Uh, I, sit, I finally plumped for 1967. This was the one that got away. I had my eighth birthday just before Christmas and I told Father Christmas that I was given, that I was too grown up and wanted a different annual that year. I still regret my choice pretty uh, soon after and the regular Rupert order was reinstated the following year. Although Father Christmas morphed into my parents, the tradition of receiving a Rupert annual continued until I was adult. It was not until many years later that I came across a copy of the missing annual and what a joy it was. A snow scene, always a fade, plus my favourite chums, a Bill and Edward, plus lots of animals, including Snuffy the dog of my dreams. Nuff said, apologies to 1948, 1949, 1963, 1969, 1980. <laughs> Sneaking, snuck more in there. <laughs> Thank you, Charles. Right, this is the cover that got three votes, putting it in second place. I'm starting to feel like um, Alan Freeman doing Pick of the Pop, very <laughs> many years ago. Uh, and the next position, da, 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 da. So, what is this cover? Thank you, Charles. It's 1956. The annual cover from your birth year is always going to be special to you, and the energy in the picture and Rupert's obvious enjoyment can't help but give you a lift. Brilliant draftsmanship, composition, captures Rupert's joy sledging headlong down the snowy slope. Wonderful colours too. I recognise it as one of as one my brother had owned when I found it while browsing in a second-hand shop. That was in the 1970s, and so my Rupert collecting began. This was also would have been one of my choices. Um, and as I said with one of the, the earlier ones, Rupert's face is showing his enjoyment. You can see it, but he, he, his tongue is slightly sticking out. You know. <laughs> really good, really enjoying that one. Uh, next one, please. So we now come, am I doing good time? Oh, I'm doing good. We come now to first position in our followers poll. This is the favourite cover of six of the 27 who voted. But wait for it. In conversation yesterday afternoon, somebody said, oh, I didn't get round to, to replying to you, but the one I would have chosen would be, and so I can increase this number to seven. <laughs> Next, so the, 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 the number one, before we do that, I've got another comment slide before the image. Uh, yes, you have, yeah, you have. Right, okay, so. Next slide, please. Okay, so we're taking the comments first. <laughs> Can you guess what's in number one position? Oh dear, this is small. It perfectly captures the anticipation, the excitement, and the sheer tingling magical joy of a childhood Christmas. This Christmas theme, this gives a clue, and it, we've seen it all the way through, haven't we? It's, 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 it's a, a lot of people, the, the nostalgic Christmas time of the year. Uh, I always associate Rupert with Christmas when I receive my annual. This personal artwork is beautiful and epitomizes the Christmas spirit. Can anyone guess what it is? I'm building up the tension. At one level, it just is. But I think it is because it is the first annual I can recall reading. It is a winter scene and I always associate Rupert, or at least a, a new annual, with Christmas. The composition, Rupert is, is centre stage, but not dominant as he is on many covers. I could even think 
I might squeeze it in there. I, I didn't think I could squeeze in there. Includes many of my favourite characters. Are we near us? Yes, the, the blue is my question. And I think there's a couple more. Charles, that's, please? That's, that's it. That's, that's it. Yeah, well, the, the slide comes up now, the picture. So, uh, oh, the picture comes up now. Okay. Are you ready? Uh, <laughs> anyone like to shout out what? 49. 49. 49. 49. Did I hear 49? 49. Yeah. Did I hear 49? How many people are anticipating that it's going to be 49? Show your hands. Oh, it's an overwhelming majority. Okay. Thank you, Charles. And the winner is, the top of the top of the poll is... Yeah. So here, here's some more comments. Um, and, and this was... I won't have the comments from the person who told me yesterday that this would be um, their choice. Uh, the most memorable and iconic one and a lovely seasonal Christmas scene. It is a very atmospheric cover showing Rupert and Chums in the snow, which is particularly suitable, a particularly suitable subject, given that the angles were so often given as Christmas presents. It also demonstrates AEB's skill as an illustrator with a lantern casting a subtle glow on the whole scene, which for me makes it very memorable. So that's a combination of what I don't identify, but a nostalgia with, it, with Christmas, but also looking at the qualities that are there within uh, Alfred's design and, and, and his depiction of, of, of that scene. Thank you, Charles. I think there might be one or two more. So, my favourite. This is what we would have reached had it just been me taking my own selection. If I had stayed with my original plan and not extended to a poll, it would have brought me to 1949 as well. So, I didn't include myself in the total, so I think that makes it eight now. <laughs> Six on there, plus the one I was told about yesterday, the one I'm, I'm now adding my own. Not because it was the year of my birth, I won't give away, <laughs> but because of all the reasons others have given, and for me, Alfred's composition and colouring, capturing the nighttime scene, are, are simply breathtaking. Thank you all for participating and listening. Was that it? One more. I forgot what I put on this, the last one. Oh, ah, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and we've got a bonus here. Neither version of the 1973 annual featured in the poem. But the brown face angle will be making an appearance later today. And Charles is holding up the original artwork, and you'll be hearing more about it. Those of you who are standing for the gala mayor tonight, uh, it's one of the uh, dinner interruptions. And the, 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 the people who will be talking about this and referring to the original artwork are in the audience at the moment. But I'm not going to say any more. No more spoilers. Some of you will probably guess who they are. So I think, is that, that's it? That's, that's, that's it. Okay, so thank you all very much. Thank you for those who participated. Those who didn't participate, shame on you, why not? But it has been suggested to me um, if, that, that, that this is something I could repeat with perhaps end papers or a story or something like that for future. Um, and somebody has also asked me today, will I be putting this in the newsletter? And uh, I think if I'm asked by the newsletter editor, I will do so. But it would, it would fill a book to repeat the whole PowerPoint from uh, the 34 images or whatever. So I should put it into prose with a few images, if that's all you would like. Yes, okay. So thank you very much, and I am. On time, I've surprised myself, I've pleased myself, I'm feeling really proud that I have not overrun and everything is ready. You stay where you are for the AGM um, and if you need them, Lou's are back are across the bridge and they're on the right, but you don't have to go down any down the down the lower level. You may have focus on the way back. So thank you for your time. Could have taken. <laughs>
extra comments and so on. But Charles asked me, how long did I need? And at the time I got oh, half an hour will be all right. I started to get, but I increased the, 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 the total slides from 20 something to 30 something. I thought, oh, I never fit it all into half an hour. Well done. Yeah, Th thank you, Roger. Fantastic. Um, obviously, well, next to the AGM, of course, we still need to tell you. Uh, Mentor lunch.